Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, February 17, 2021. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says that SVG will receive at least six types of COVID-19 vaccines, which will be rolled out under the National Vaccination Program. During his weekly appearance on NBC Radio this morning, PM Gonzalez listed the COVID-19 vaccines which are expected in the state, including the Janssen vaccine made by Johnson & Johnson. We have done six vaccines. The, the, the author, emergency authorization, we have Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Covishield, which is the Indian-produced AstraZeneca, which is the one which is currently being um, used. Then we have Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, vaccine and the Sputnik, the Russian vaccine. The Prime Minister said that India is also producing its own vaccines, which are still on the trial, as well as Cuba. He said SVG will be interested in the vaccines once their trial is successful. In, we are not ready to do any emergency authorization for that because the third stage trials are going to be concluded in March. The same thing in relation to the Cuban sovereign. So you have to keep tracking all the time what is happening. Um, I spoke yesterday to the Indian High Commissioner, for St. Vincent Grenadines, who resides in Suriname, about the about the co-vaccine. So when those are done, we will we will we will follow through. But we have an interest in it once all the tests go well. PM Gonzalez said that 100,000 of the AstraZeneca vaccines are expected to be purchased by the Mustig Charitable Organization for SVG, and another 40,000 will be a donation from the Indian government. We, we want to, it would be easier for us to charter a plane, at least that's the, the thinking too. Rather than bring it, rather than it come in the normal commercial way, we should take some more time. We we, we could we, we could charter a plane, several of them in Dubai, which is not too far away, and we share the cost now. Um, so that's in relation to those forty thousand. And during a virtual address at the UN Security Council meeting today, PM Gonzalez again called for equitable access for COVID-19 vaccines by all nations, which he said must form part of any serious effort to recover sustainably from the pandemic. BM Gonzalez noted that there have been deaths, economic destruction, and social dislocations as a result of the pandemic. Hence, equitable access of vaccines is important. Amidst this continuously evolving threat, the question of equitable access to vaccines is of prominent concern, great concern. One of the major issues in contemporary uh, political economy today. The simple truth is that unless vaccines are made available, affordable, and accessible to all, many vulnerable countries and peoples, including those affected by conflict, would suffer unbearably as the pandemic continues to destroy lives and livelihoods. Greater international cooperation amongst all countries international financial institutions and major pharmaceutical companies is clearly required. The Prime Minister also reiterated CARICOM's call to have a global summit to discuss equitable access and global distribution of vaccines. We would welcome an enforceable international rules-based compact to deliver vaccines to all who need it. We also reiterate the Caribbean communities, CARICOM's call for a global summit in the context of the World Health Organization's Access COVID-19 Tools Accelerator Facilitation Council to discuss equitable access and distribution of vaccines. 
We in the Caribbean community, CARICOM, are resolved to share with each other on the basis of need, whatever quantities of vaccines we receive or procure. Political will, principled engagements, and solidarity among all nations remain crucial elements for overcoming COVID-19. The Prime Minister said during this difficult period, the Security Council must work in unison with, with organs of the United Nations to systematically address the various dimensions of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our delegation remains fully supportive of all efforts to promote a global ceasefire to arm conflicts everywhere. This ceasefire would afford conflict-affected countries the time and space to advance peace processes and would facilitate the sustained delivery of life-saving humanitarian, developmental, and capacity-building assistance. A ceasefire will also ensure that vaccines can be distributed safely to those made most vulnerable by conflict, including internally displaced persons and refugees. Where mandates and capabilities allow, peacekeeping operations could be utilized to assist with the transportation and distribution of vaccines, including providing protection to those designated personnel who administer vaccines. St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Tuesday registered five new COVID-19 cases from samples taken on February 12th, 13 and 15. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, said one case is a traveler who tested positive on quarantine. Day 7 and the other cases are from contacts of known positives. NEMO said the positivity rate for February 12th is now 6.2%, February 13th at 11.9% February 14 remains at 5% and February 15 at 2.4%. It was also noted that there were no reported positive cases for Tuesday, February 16, 2021, before the update was made public. 20 persons were cleared, bringing the number of total recoveries at 632. 824 cases remain active and six persons with COVID-19 have died. 1,400 162 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in St. Vincent and the Grenadines since March 2020. The public is reminded to wear a facial covering, physical distance, sanitize hands and vaccinate to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In other news, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez has pledged to support the strained public transportation sector by providing a subsidy of no less than 500 EC dollars for a two-month period to omnibus operators and a continuation of the sanitization services. Speaking on the radio today, PM Gonzalez detailed the outcome of a Zoom meeting held on Tuesday afternoon between himself, other government representatives, and executives executive members of the Vincentian Transportation Association, Vintas. Last year, we gave $500 to the mini buses for two months. When we Remember when we had the spike, when, when there was a period of, of great uncertainty, and the bigger buses, we gave $600. I told them that we will give them a subsidy, a temporary subsidy, at a number not less than what they got last year. You understand me, Johnny P? That's what I told them. I'm not a beast, you know. <laughs> I hope that's what's happening. And we have to, despite all the difficult circumstances, we have to help. These regulations which we put in place, they have a sunset clause, you know. One month. Dr. Gonzalez went on to add that while the government understands the struggles being faced by omnibus drivers and owners, many of the requests put forward by the association representing them are un unattainable. Some of the recommendations made by the association included a reduction in fuel and a permanent economic subsidy. 
fuel in this in St. Vincent and Grenadines is the cheapest in the Caribbean, in the Caricom, for the ranch and dad and Tobago. We we get some taxes from fuel. We're going to reduce the extent of the taxes on the fuel. Well, if you do that, how are you going to pay the policemen who are supposed to be on the road to help to maintain the, the law and order and the traffic, or the nurses, or the teachers? How are you going to... You have 600 minibuses, you have 34,000 vehicles are there about. You have separate gas stations for them. How are you going to walk? A permanent economic subsidy of a minimum of $500 per month. Permanent, you know. I thought this was something about COVID. You know, I, I can only make policy on a rational basis and within the context of reasonableness and, and um, the economic circumstances. The association also called for duty-free concessions and the cancellation of pending traffic tickets for illegal stops, which PM Gonzalez also rejected. He said he expected the association to call for a modern regulated sector. Giving everybody duty-free concessions on 18-seaters. Um, a lot of people... Instead of buying a car, go buy a minibus. We have to think through this thing carefully. A number of them drop off and pick up people willy-nilly, wherever they feel like. They want us to waive the ticket. The law says, there's a regulation which says, a statutory rule and order, that the ticket is issued to you in breach of certain road traffic offenses. If you don't pay the ticket in a certain time, that ticket becomes a summons for you to attend the court. Because it assumes that if you don't pay it, you're contesting. So the court will then make the order. If you're paying it, you just go in and pay the ticket. Where a legal process has commenced, how can the executive interfere. Speaking on the issue of duty-free concessions, Dr. Gonzalez noted that 80% duty-free concessions were given last year for 20-plus seater buses as it is um, more economical to use bigger buses for many communities. He said a 75% duty-free concession was also given for 20-plus seater buses designated to transport school children, adding that these types of buses were also needed to serve the tourism sector, while highlighting that duty-free concession for 18-seater buses could encourage the mass accumulation of these types of vehicles, of which the government is seeking to dissuade persons from buying. A number of omnibus operators across SVG suspended their service over the last few days over concerns with the COVID-19 public health measures, which stipulate that public transportation reduce their passenger load by 50% capacity. The Vincentian Transportation Association, on behalf of affected omnibus drivers and owners, facilitated the discussion with the government to find a common ground. And following the announcement by PM Gonzalez that the government will be assisting omnibus operators with a subsidy of no less than $500 for the next two months, there have been mixed responses from omnibus operators. SOG TV News spoke with a few operators at the Spass Winwood bus terminal in capital Kingston today to hear their views. While some of the operators say they are grateful for the financial support, the over overwhelming cry is still the same. They want to be able to transport 12 passengers, which they say will put them in a better position to meet their expenses. I don't mind the 500, but still at least for me, if they didn't raise it back to 12 passengers, that would be very satisfactory for us. 
Every week you have to pay a pass, a, um, your conduct to, to $250. That's one week. That's two weeks money right there, $500. You have maintained the gas plus bricks, so it's difficult. Well, so far, that could help a lot. They give you two more passengers and a little money a month. It's better than nothing at all. You understand? So, I got, I got take it. So, I'm going to find out wrong with the, um, the eight. When they cook eight, they can wait. They could take a chance and get pay more than eight. They do it. Just have a look for the police, them. You know what I mean? Because person doing their job. If I'm doing job, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. When questioned as to whether they stood with their colleagues, those who our news team spoke with today at the Winwood Bus Terminal alluded to poor communication between the association, Vintas, and its members. The president of the, bu the minibus operation should come across the board and meet everybody, all the van owners. Have a meeting with them first before you take the matters to the, the government. Mineral Stanley Road, you know. I have workers carrying. So I just bit I fit in one and sometime to help out some passenger. Once the story comes down properly clear to us down here, we will strike. Proper information not coming down. I think everybody not pulling the weight. Most likely so. Because sometimes some people say okay, we're going to strike. Some is on the road still and some is off, so it's been difficult. Since last week I wasn't walking, today is the first I'm actually walking back to see how things are really going. And then again, it's, it's not, not going so well. So, my advice, well, I would like for the association to have back at least 12 passengers. So, we would see a, a better income. Well, at least I have all the money people have trouble with me. I got to take them from Pinty to Pinty. I can't pull off and left them stranded. You know what I mean? The other side of them have the same people and they left them stranded, which is bad. By the end of the day, they're going to trouble them again. So it's left to them to trouble them still. And President of the Vincentian Transportation Association, Roy Ron Adams, in a radio interview today, sought to justify the request made by the association to the government on behalf of omnibus operators. Adams says while COVID-19 restrictions have made it impossible for a general gathering of members, the ideas that were put forward were from virtual conversations with members and that they stand, he stands by the recommendations made. Despite despite many, including the Prime Minister and other omnibus operators, deeming them unreasonable. Adam says omnibus operators who have sought to distance themselves from the recommendations made and advocate for a boycott of the association are playing into the hands of policymakers who strive on a divided sector. He said despite different views, omnibus operators must stand together in response to the request for a waiver in license fees and a 50% reduction thereafter. Adam says the public transportation sector uh, provides about a million dollars in revenues in that respect and that a waiver is reasonable during these times. This is us saying to you that these are things that could help us during this crisis. What is wrong with that request? So you are to, you are, we are having a conversation here about less than half a million dollars of um, of license fees that come from directly from our sector. Yes, yes. But we are turning a blind eye to the fact that we just get hit with an extra one percent on custom surcharge that's going to bring the government upwards of ten million dollars. So you are telling me that on a one-off basis, we can't make a reasonable request. As we go through this tough time for minibuses, or if not a full waiver, a 50% reduction, that, that you consider to be unreasonable? Adams also made his justification for the request by the association to waive a pending traffic tickets. He clarified that the request did not apply to future infractions. People don't understand that this ticketing system from the traffic department is a high revenue generating item, you know. That is why we don't get bus stops at convenient places. You leave in Tokyo, you don't have a bus stop at the hospital. But a busman must stop there to leave off a granny who's sick and won't go to hospital. You tell me, and a, and, a, and, a, and a police officer would come right in Kingston by the hospital and give you a ticket to leave somebody there or to pick up a nurse's going home. 
The Vintage President also stated that operating within a sector where the public choose when and how much to pay is very frustrating. He added that the sector is heavily regulated by the government and operators, unlike other businesses, do not pass on their operational costs to commuters. Many bus operators in St. Vincent and the Grenadians operate a business that is regulated and legislated by government. And, you know, when I hear people talk about we run a business, we should pay tax, we should do this, we should do that, and we should do this. I really want them to answer this question for me. If minibus men are allowed to pass on all of the increased costs that we incur every year to consumers, what do you think bus fare would look like today? Unaffordable. People don't understand the overall frustration that minibus face on a daily basis operating them. Okay. But the only thing they could say is we speed, we are loud music, we reckless. Yes. Yes. Those things happening. I know they're happening. Yes, we need to get rid of them out the industry. But let's don't turn a blind eye to all of the other things them, that the public themselves are happy doing. And nobody rebuking the public for those things. Adam said while the government is currently deciding on the exact figure of the monthly subsidy, there is also the possibility of increasing passenger capacity. They are, they are evaluating a few things. One, how long this subsidy, this subsidy would be in place for. Obviously, this have a lot to do with their intel and what is happening with the coronavirus, quite naturally. Whether it is that the Ministry of Health are in a position to relax the protocol sooner rather than later, or whether in, they have to intensify it, for another few months we obviously don't have the data to influence any decision in that regard so that is totally within their ambit to do right so we are waiting for a decision on that we are also waiting on a decision on the amount like i said but we know it would not be anything less than five hundred dollars we are also waiting on a decision with respect to whether the capacity would move from seven fair paying passenger to nine fair paying passenger. Some updates now on the Lasso Frey volcano. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, says in its update today that all monitoring data indicate that the ongoing effusion outflow of magma onto the crater floor continues and that the overall rate of growth since the onset of the new dome growth is approximately 1.9 cubic meters per second. Nemo said there are no clear indications that the activity is either increasing or decreasing in intensity, but there are periodic changes in the rate at which the dome growth is occurring. According to the Disaster Management Agency, measurements of the gas emissions releases from the new dome as well as a preliminary visual inspection of rock samples collected from the dome is indicative of new magmatic material from depth contributing to the lava intrusion now taking place in the crater. Nemo said it has also been noted that there is a clear gas plume a column or cloud trail from the dome that is damaging the vegetation in the summit areas on the southwest of the volcano. Meanwhile, Nemo staff are expected to conduct a drive-through in the Connery community on Friday, February 19, 2021, to update residents on the state of the Lasso Frey volcano and to provide information on evacuation procedures and individual preparedness. Nemo is reminding the public that no evacuation order or notice has been issued and that and continues to appeal to the public to desist from visiting the volcano, especially going into the crater, since doing so is extremely dangerous. The organization says it will continue to provide regular updates on all activities taking place at Lasso Frere. 
The Christian community, particularly Catholics, today held prayer sessions and other activities to observe Ash Wednesday, which marks the start of the Lenten season. Monsignor Michael Stewart of the Roman Catholic Church here in SVG told us with TV News in a telephone interview that due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the protocols in place, the Ash Wednesday activities were held differently and scaled down. Others either outside or, of course, we, we have the distribution of ashes and um, what we encourage our folks to do is to either bring small containers or we provide them with ash so that they may return home to their families and or impose the ash on themselves and on their families using the words repent and believe the good news or remember that you are dust and unto dust you shall return. Monsignor Stewart said the Lenten season is a time for prayer and fasting and encourage all Vincentians and others to use the 40 days to get closer to God by listening to the word of God, reflect on their morals and spiritual values. Look again at how we behave and to align our behaviors, our lives, to the will of God. So basically Lent is, is a time that calls us to deeper conversion, conversion of heart. So the theme of repentance, conversion, of turning back to the ways of God. Noting that the country is still in the pandemic with many challenges, Monsignor Stewart said now is also a good time for persons to seek God's mercy. We are also battling with the COVID virus. It's also a splendid opportunity for us to see God's mercy. God's mercy for ourselves. God's mercy for our families, God's mercy for our society. Again, I say let us use this time and use it well. All that we're given really is now. The 40 days of Lent ends on Saturday, April 3rd, 2021, a day after Good Friday. The 2021 National Corporate Public Speaking Championship has been cancelled. In a news release, the executive of the championship said they were looking forward to another keenly contested competition this year. However, the ongoing global COVID-19 pandemic, the rise in active cases in SVG and the additional protocols implemented by the government have led to the decision to cancel this year's competition. The executive says the priority is keeping everyone safe and healthy at this time and thank the Vincentian community, patron and sponsors who have supported the championship since it was introduced in 2019. The National Corporate Public Speaking Championship was introduced in 2019 to highlight the importance of communication and leadership in the corporate world while providing a learning platform and coaching opportunities for employees of business places. Petty Officer in the SVG Coast Guard Service Junior Batiste was admitted virtually on Tuesday, February 16, 2021, to practice as a barrister and solicitor in the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court in St. Vincent and the Grenadine Circuit. Before High Court Judge, the Honorable Justice Nicole Byer, Batiste is the first Coast Guard officer and the fourth member of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force to attain uh, that feat, following in the footsteps of former Deputy Commissioner of Police, 
His Worship Magistrate Bertie Pompey, Commissioner of Police Colin John, and Assistant Superintendent of Police uh, John Baller. Batiste has served over 25 years and counting as a law enforcement officer. His call to, to the bar was moved by Commissioner of Police Colin John and second by Barrister Carl Williams. Batiste said his journey over the past 10 years was rough and challenging. However, he was able to endure to the end with the support of his friends and family, noting that he is proud to be the first serving Coast Guard officer to be called to the bar of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court in SVG. The Commissioner of Police, Commander of the SVG Coast Guard, and members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force extend congratulations to the Petty Officer Batiste on his achievement. And that brings us to the end of the local news. We hear that St. Lucians urge not to let their guards down as the island continues to battle COVID-19. This from the region. When we return, stay with us.